In today's video, I'm going to be talking about uh, eradicating disease and I'm going to be looking at a national uh, campaign to eradicate the disease malaria in Mauritius. This is part of the OCR A-level uh, geography spec and disease dilemmas where you need to know um, disease eradication strategies at lots of levels and this is the one that relates to the national level. So the first thing we need to know is when we talk about a national level, this is what we call a top-down approach. This means that it's a campaign that's led at government level uh, and then that kind of information and those decisions filter down to the population, but the decisions are made at the government level. So the place we're going to look at is Mauritius. It's a small island in the Indian Ocean, not far from Madagascar, and the disease they had there was uh, malaria. So it was endemic to the country um, since the 19th century. And in 1867, they had a quite a severe epidemic that killed nearly an eighth of the population. So it was a very significant problem for many, many years. Because they were having this severe problem, a vector-borne disease that was causing uh, lots of problems to the population, they decided to have a national campaign, top-down approach, and this was launched in 1948 and went on until 1951. They did a couple of test experiments and then the campaign was rolled out between these dates. And as we can see in the picture here, they actually sprayed buildings um, uh, and breeding sites with this chemical called DDT. So the young guy here is actually spraying the buildings. And you can see on the right hand side, that's actually how they separated out the uh, country into different regions and um, a different person was responsible um, for uh, organising the spraying of the buildings um, in each of these sections. This was um, when the British was a colonial power in Mauritius and so they actually had a different um, member of the kind of army that was involved in overseeing these areas. So here's a, just a more modern example of um, what they were trying to do. It's where they spray indoors. And this is what we would call a direct strategy because you're directly trying to uh, kill off the mosquitoes at the source. Um, and you can see that this chap is um, spraying the indoor, insides of the building to, to eradicate um, the mosquitoes inside. This um, campaign was relatively successful. Um, as we can see from my diagram here, um, when the 1948 uh, to 51 was when the campaign happened. Um, and you can see after this line that the, the kind of malarial cases, the amount of people dying from it went down significantly after many years of going up and down. So we can say it successfully reduced the mortality rates. And here's some figures, six in, in a thousand died from it in 1943 and that was down to 0.6 by 1951. So we could say that the ultimate sign of success was by 1973 the World Health Organization had declared Mauritius malaria free. However unfortunately that wasn't um, going to stay around for long. So in uh, 1975 a cyclone called Cyclone Gervais actually hit the island and this caused malaria to uh, come back. The reasons why was the fact that um, there was wide scale damage to the infrastructure and to repair all that damage, they actually got lots of people in who were migrant workers and the migrant workers were involved in the reconstruction. But unfortunately, lots of these migrant workers came from areas which actually had malaria and therefore they, in their bodies, um, introduced the malarial parasite to the island. The other major factor was the fact was all this flooding and storm surges created by the cyclone that there was, um, you know, stagnant water around, which once the parasites were back in the ecosystem, it meant there was new breeding grounds for them to grow. And we can see on the right here, that's what uh, the actual parasite would look like in the water. So this combination basically meant that by 1982, we were having malaria epidemics again, and as we can see here. Uh, a significant amount of cases and so they had to again implement a new strategy um, in the 80s in 1982 to try and combat it again. So the second campaign was kind of similar to the first campaign in some ways they sprayed indoors with DTT they fogged or sprayed breeding sites to kill off the mosquitoes um, at their source they also introduced 
Um, these a type of fish that would eat mosquito larvae, so that means uh, it was quite a natural way of um, dealing with it. And they also introduced anti-malarial drugs, spe specifically this drug called chloro uh, chloroquine, which was um, distributed to the population. And therefore, they were trying to attack this from a multiple routes to so that they could not only get um, rid of the mosquitoes directly, but also deal with any consequences if people did actually catch the disease. This was relatively successful, um, but they've also added um, more into this. By 1998, the government has started screening passengers that are entering the country. So when people come to the country, they are um, picked out of a lineup and then they are screened. And this has been relatively successful. Nearly 170,000 people are screened every year. And they, what they do if... Um, people come from malarial um, uh, endemic countries or they've actually got symptoms when they arrive, then they are kept under surveillance for a, a significant a pe period of time. That People have their blood samples taken and then those people are um, kept under surveillance for up to four months. So there's really, really good systems in place, which again are led by the government, top-down approach, which mean that malaria has been very significantly reduced. Other strategies that are kind of part of that wider second elimination um, is the fact that if you go to uh, Mauritius and malaria, malaria, you do have malaria, then all of the treatment that you would get is uh, even whether private or public is actually free. Uh, they still are regularly spraying these breeding sites and th they do residual indoor spraying. So that means they spray indoors of most buildings nearly every six months. So this combined approach has been very, very successful. And this is a, a, a map of the world which shows countries that have malaria are malaria free. And, you know, I can circle Mauritius here and say that it is considered malaria free by um, the World Health Organization. If there are any cases, it's less than 30 and all of these would have been imported from other countries. So it's not actually indigenous to Mauritius anymore. This is a really good example of a successful campaign that went through some bumps along the path, but has now been um, successfully implemented and um, actually has kept a vector-borne disease at bay.